Alistair Comston ist Professor für Neurologie und Leiter der Abteilung für klinische Neurowissenschaften an der Universität Cambridge und Herausgeber von Brain. What effective substances are right now available for MS? The story of MS over the last 20 years has really been very successful. And the good thing is that there's now a great deal of choice for people who have multiple sclerosis in terms of the treatments uh, that can be used. So the discussion between the patient and the doctor is to work out for them which one is going to be right in terms of efficacy, safety, convenience and the stage of the illness that they've reached. And which substances are going to be available next? Well, we already have a number of licensed therapies and more have come uh, online this year. So in Europe this year, at least two drugs have been newly licensed and we know of some others which are on their way. The change which is occurring is a move away from drugs that have to be given every other day or even every day by injection under the skin or into the muscle towards drugs which can be given much less frequently. One of the recently licensed drugs only has to be given for five days in the first year and then for three days in the second year uh, and never again. And of course, some of the newly licensed drugs can be taken as a tablet orally. So these are advances in terms of convenience. And what about progressive MS? A great deal of progress has been made in the understanding and the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Remember that 25 years ago we had no treatments for any patients. Now we have a range of drugs and injectable medicines which are extremely effective in people early on in multiple sclerosis. But these drugs don't really help people with advanced forms of the illness uh, and the progressive stage. So that is the big unmet need in multiple sclerosis. We have a good understanding of why people do develop the progressive phase. And it's because the process of inflammation, which happens early, has given way to the process of degeneration. And so an entirely new class of drugs is needed to protect the nervous system. Possibly one of the most hopeful substances is not a drug at all, but is new myelin coating around the nerves. So drugs and other interventions which can encourage remyelination in the nervous system may be the solution to progression. But meanwhile, I'm optimistic that there will be some tablets, some injections, which will help the progressive phase over the next period of time. May we sincerely think about curing MS? Well, that is a big question. Uh, and the first step is, has, uh, has been to understand the nature of the illness, uh, to understand that there is this dynamic between inflammation early on, followed by progression. We can now more or less manage the early inflammatory phase, uh, and we are moving on towards treatments that we hope will help the progressive phase. But you ask a question which lies beyond that, which is can we prevent or cure multiple sclerosis altogether? That will require a better understanding of the cause of the illness that we have. We know that genetic factors do place certain people at increased risk. Uh, we've already identified 110 of the different genes which do confer susceptibility. But something has to trigger that risk, and at the moment we haven't a clear idea of the triggers. But once we've understood the genetic basis, once, once we've understood the triggers, once we've really grasped the nature of the causes, the etiology of multiple sclerosis, then the possibility uh, of a cure becomes uh, a, a reality.